Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at getting Proxmox set up. Now, this is going to be a very basic setup, uh, and I do wanna make this as uh, kind of user-friendly, entry-level friendly as possible, so we're gonna break this up across multiple videos. Uh, basically, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the hardware that we're going to use for this initial setup. Uh, we'll also take a look at getting uh, it, Proxmox installed uh, both, uh, we'll, we'll download the ISO, we'll get our, our bootable media set up, we'll install Proxmox on our actual hardware, Hardware, and then we'll go through the basic setups to get ourselves ready for actually getting into virtual machines, containers, and things like that. So this video is going to be a very, very basic intro to just getting Proxmox set up. Also, um, the hardware that I'm using in this video may not be the same hardware that you've got. Uh, basically, uh, any x86 platform will work. Uh, I've got a, a couple of drives that I'll be using. I've got a USB drive that I'll use for my operating system for Proxmox itself, as well as a 480 gig drive that I'll be using for uh, for all of my VMs and containers and that sort of thing uh, when we get to that point. Um, but just know the hardware I'm using isn't necessarily the be all end all, but I will have it linked in the description down below if you want to take a look at getting something similar. So with that said, let's jump over to Proxmox's website and get our USB drive set up first. So here we are on Proxmox.com and what we can do is come over here to downloads and uh, right here is the virtual environment system that I'm going to be using for this series. I'm gonna to go to ISO images, and then right here, Proxmox VE 7.2 ISO installer. Just click download, it'll download to your system. And then once it's downloaded, uh, we can move on to the next step of actually getting it installed on our uh, USB drive. So I like to use Belina Etcher. You can use uh, Rufus or whatever uh, image or USB imaging software you wanna use. Of course, like I said, I'm gonna use Belina Etcher. First thing we gotta do is go find the file that we just downloaded. Then we'll wanna find our installation USB drive, basically the, the drive that we'll use to install Proxmox onto our server. And then we can actually just click flash and then give that a few minutes to do its thing. And then once that's done, we're ready to move over and take a look at our hardware. Okay guys, so this is the hardware that I'm going to use for my initial very, very basic setup. And look, I understand that this isn't going to make everybody happy. Uh, this is, this everybody's gonna have a different opinion on what should be done, how this should be set up, but this is what I'm going to use uh, for the sake of this very basic setup for right now. Um, so we're gonna use a Zima board 832, the uh, nice folks at Zima board provided this to me. If you haven't checked this video out, definitely do that. I'll have a link to that in the description if I remember correctly. But uh, basically this has a quad core processor, uh, an Intel processor uh, with eight gigs of RAM. So that's where, um, oh, and it's got 32 gigs of onboard storage that we're not gonna use. It does have uh, two ethernet ports that are both one gig, a couple of USB 3 ports, and a mini display port uh, and a power port there. It also has a PCI Express port. We're not gonna use that, um, but this is this is what we're gonna use for our main uh, hardware. <clears throat> we're gonna use a, a Keoxia. Uh, the folks at Zima board also provided this. This is a 480 gig, uh, we can see right here, uh, Keoxia SSD. This is what we're gonna use for our storage on the device where all of our uh, VMs and containers and all that kind of stuff will get stored. <clears throat> we're also going to use a 256 gig USB device uh, for our boot drive. So uh, that's just what we're gonna use here for the basic setup. And of course, uh, I've also got this uh, SATA connector uh, that will then, we'll just get this plugged in here real quick. It goes on, but that's what that's gonna look like. And then the, the, the hard drive we'll plug into here. So tuck that under, then we're gonna plug in this. That again, this is where our, this is gonna be our uh, OS drive. That's where that's gonna go. I've also got an ethernet drive that'll go, or an ethernet port, not a drive, I don't know what I'm thinking. That's gonna go there. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna be using our uh, tiny pilot system to kind of show you the installation process here. Uh, so that's what this uh, USB port right here is for. And then luckily, because uh, Michael Lynch, the, the guy behind uh, the tiny pilot system has made it so that I can use the hub on my switch. In fact, I can just show you that here real quick, hopefully. Okay, here we go. So I've got um, my Zima board uh, from here uh, plugged in to this. This is optional. This is just because I'm doing a tutorial, uh, but I do have uh, my uh, my Proxmox bootable USB plugged in right there. And that's how we're going to boot uh, into here and get everything installed on our Zima board. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is actually get uh, this plugged in right there and head over to the desktop. Okay, so here we have our tiny pilot screen. We're connected, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna reach over here and plug in our Zima board like so. 
And then here in a second, we should, we should start seeing uh, a little something up here. Helps if I plug in the uh, video port, the uh, HDMI or DV uh, display port, whatever. Let's try that again. Uh, hopefully this time we will actually get somewhere because I missed it on that first go. So hopefully we'll get a signal here in a moment. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tapping delete on my keyboard. There we go. I'm gonna go over here to boot. Um, that should be fine. Yep. So I'll go ahead and let this uh, boot back up. Hopefully this flickering thing will stop. Okay, little loose wire, not a big deal. It looks like it's going uh, just fine now. So no more flashing, good to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and, and install Proxmox VE, uh, just the standard install there. You know what, let's actually do a full screen here. Full screen, like so, awesome. All right, so we're gonna hit enter to install Proxmox VE. Okay, so here we are, we're on the installer. Of course, this is the uh, EULA. You'll wanna read through that uh, if you wanna do that. And then once you've agreed to it, you can just come down here and click, I agree. And then this is kind of where we're going to install it. Uh, the first option, it targeted my, uh, my uh, onboard storage. I don't wanna use that. But what I wanna use is actually this 232 gig SanDisk 3.2 Gen 1. Um, of course, we've also got our 480 gig uh, Keoxia drive there. We're not, gonna, we're not going to install Proxmox on that. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select SDB for our 250 gig uh, approximately drive there. We'll click next. Then we're gonna select our location. Uh, I am near Denver, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and select next. Password. And then an email address. like so, and we'll click next. And then we've got a management interface that we can select from. We've got two different options here. Again, I've only got one plugged in for right now. That's just kind of a, a good way to start off. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. Uh, I am gonna call this, I'm gonna give it a, a, a host name, a fully qualified domain name, um, sort of. I'm gonna call it PVE1. Oops, once I get clicked in there. E1, oops, one, dot local. Like so, so basically PVE for Proxmox Virtual Environment. And then one, because by the time we're done with this, we will uh, actually be doing some high availability clustering stuff. Uh, so I just wanna identify this as the first node. So that's what I've called it there. Uh, we can see that our IP address will be 1.45. We'll wanna keep that in mind for later. Uh, you can change your DNS server if you want. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna change it to 1.1.1.1, like so. Just in case I've got DNS issues or something else, uh, it won't affect this. So uh, once I'm happy with all of this, I can click next. Um, and then we just get a chance to verify that we like where all of this, how all of this looks. And then it says automatically reboot after a successful installation. Sure, let's go ahead and do that and click install. And then at this point, we can just kind of hang out and wait for this to do its thing. So this will uh, take a few minutes depending on the hardware you're using. Uh, again, I'm using a quad core processor with eight gigs of RAM. Um, so we'll give this a few minutes and then once it's done, we'll come back and uh, move on to the next steps. A few moments later. Okay, so we are down to the last little bit. It says it's making the system bootable. And uh, hopefully here in just a moment, this will reboot and we'll be able to uh, get started with our first Proxmox node. Okay, so here we can see that we've got an IP address. We do wanna make sure that we note that it is HTTPS when we go to that IP address. Uh, it's just one of those things that they've done. So be sure uh, to put that in. Otherwise you won't get to where you're trying to go. Okay, so here it is booted up. We're good to go there. Uh, it says we've got PVE1 login. Uh, we're not gonna do anything in this window here. What I'm gonna do is actually open this up. You can see I've got HTTP uh, 1.45, 8006 is the, the port for the dashboard. We're gonna go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna say your connection isn't private. That's fine. We're gonna go ahead and say advanced and then proceed. And then here we go. Now we've got uh, a login screen. So our, our username is root. And then whatever password we set up uh, when, uh, when we were going through this process and we'll say login. 
Okay, so here we are. We are logged into our Proxmox virtual environment. Uh, and here we can see that we're using 1% of our four CPUs. Uh, we're using about a gig of memory um, and uh, we're using about two gigs of our 200 gigs of storage for our OS drive. So um, that's kind of where we are first. I think the first thing we want to do here uh, is actually come over here to PVE1 and then come over here to disks like here. And right here, this is the disk that we want to use uh, to set up all of our, uh, our virtual machines, our containers, those sorts of things. So uh, what I wanna do, we can see that, that it is uh, right here, it's 480 gigs. It's currently NTFS, so we're gonna wipe the disk um, and we're gonna say yes. We'll give this just a second to do its thing here. Now let's see if we can come over here to uh, ZFS, create ZFS, and right there is our drive. Now, um, of course, we don't, <clears throat> ZFS is optional here. Uh, when I first set up uh, the, the the configuration that I showed in the first video of this series, I used LVM, uh, which was which was perfectly fine for what I was doing uh, until I realized that I wanted to do clustering and high availability and things like that. Uh, in order for high availability to be an option, you need to use ZFS. And of course, there are uh, upsides and downsides to using ZFS. The, the upside is uh, better data integrity, checksums, that sort of thing. You can definitely do your own research on ZFS and its benefits. However, uh, if you, it does have kind of a RAM requirement. Uh, the general rule of thumb, uh, based on my understanding, is about one gig of RAM per terabyte of hard drive space on your system. So I'm only gonna be using about 580 gigs of hard drive space on here. I've got eight gigs of RAM on the system. I feel like I'm gonna be perfectly fine here. Um, so I am going to use um, uh, ZFS on this system because again, later, I do want to do high availability clustering and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna use ZFS here. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna click on create ZFS. Uh, I'm gonna call this storage, like so. Um, and we've got a RAID level. Uh, if I had two drives on here, which ideally I would like to have, two drives running in RAID Z, um, I don't, I've just got the one drive. So we're just gonna do a very basic one or a single disk setup here. Uh, we're gonna leave add disk or add storage checked there. Compression is on, the A shift is fine. Uh, we're gonna uh, select that drive right there and click on create. I'll give this a moment to do its thing and then we should be able to move on. And just that quickly, uh, again, very, very easy to set up there. Here's our new storage device here. Uh, and we can see that uh, it is, uh, currently it is 461 gigs after the format. Of course, there's always some formatting overhead for the file system, that sort of thing. Perfectly fine though. Um, so that's, that's the, the, the basics of getting Proxmox set up. We've, we've, we've looked over our hardware. Uh, we've uh, installed Proxmox on a USB drive. We've installed Proxmox on our actual physical hardware and we've logged in and got our storage set up. There are a couple of other things that we do want to take a look at just real quickly here uh, that I will of course have links to in the description as well. So what we're actually gonna take a look at here is this Proxmox helper scripts. Uh, it's a good way to get started, kind of clean some things up, make things a little bit more user friendly in my opinion. And of course, this guy's opinion and the opinion of uh, Jay Collins over on Discord again, uh, shared this this morning. And uh, I wanted to kind of run through a couple of things on here. The first one uh, is this uh, uh, Proxmox VE7 post install. This script will give options to disable the enterprise repo, add and correct PVE sources, enable the no subscription repo and add test repo and disable subscription nag, all of that stuff with one simple subscri or, uh, script run here. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna back, come back over to here, go into here. We're going to find our shell and then we're gonna paste this in here right there and hit enter. Um, and, and it says, hey, do you wanna start this? And we're gonna say Y for yes and hit enter. And then we're just going to uh, disable the enterprise repository. Uh, that is fine, we can hit yes. Uh, add correct PVE sources, uh, yes, that's good, we'll do that. Enable the no subscription repository, sure, why not? Uh, add disabled beta slash test repository, sure, we'll go ahead and do that. Disable the subscription nag, yes, please, yes, let's do that, that's great. And now we're all done with that script and it just kind of made things a little bit more user friendly when we log in, do those sorts of things. The other one that I really, really wanna do here um, is the dark theme one. So of course this will give us dark theme. Uh, so we're gonna come back over here. We're gonna grab this script right there. Come back over here, click, paste, enter. 
will give this a minute to do its thing. And then when we refresh the page, we should be in dark mode. And of course, if you watch this channel for any time at all, you'll know that I love, I prefer dark mode over, over a blinding white screen. Of course, it's not bad here because, uh, you know, we're on a terminal screen, but when we get to other places, it gets bright. I don't like it. So uh, we're gonna come back up to our thing there. We're gonna hit reload. Hey, look, isn't that nicer? Isn't that much nicer? Let's go ahead and close that. So basically at this point, uh, we are set up and ready to go. Um, and this is, this again, this is just a basic setup with Proxmox. And um, I, I, again, the thing about self-hosting that I love is that there isn't necessarily one right way to do it. Um, there, there are often a dozen different ways to accomplish the same thing. And it's really a matter of preference um, and re available resources and things like that. So you can almost always find a way to do something if you want to put in the time and effort to figure out how to do it. And um, so that's, that's kind of what we're going to do here. Um, and, and we're just going to kind of go with just kind of a, a very, again, a very basic setup in this series. Uh, I do want to kind of wrap it up here. So we've actually covered quite a bit in this video already. We have uh, created our bootable media. We've looked over our hardware. Uh, we've, we've put all of our hardware together and uh, have gone so far as to even get Proxmox installed. We've done some updates uh, with some configuration. We've added our storage. Of course, not all of this is in order. I'm just kind of rambling off the top of my head here. Um, but we've got Proxmox up and ready to go at this point. Uh, in upcoming videos, uh, the next couple of videos that we're going to take a look at, of course, will be getting a Proxmox backup server set up and configured so that as we're building building this out, uh, we can automatically back things up as we go uh, so that we're less likely to lose things. Or if we screw something up, we can restore to where it was just moments ago. So that's going to be another uh, big video coming here very soon. Also, um, I again, if you watched that first video in this series, you'll, you'll know that I switched a lot of my self-hosted stuff over to uh, Proxmox containers versus VMs. Uh, we, of course, will look at both of those. But with the VMs, what I've actually figured out that I like to do is create a template VM uh, where I'll use a turnkey solution, a turnkey core Linux distro, and uh, then build it up so that it's got all of the stuff that I want for all of my containers, and then uh, kind of save that. So when I'm ready to deploy another container, I just uh, duplicate it and then install what I need to install without having to go through the process of a full setup every time. So again, our next couple of videos will be uh, setting up a backup server as well as creating a template for our, uh, for our containers for faster deployment in the future. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. This has already been a long video. Thank you so much for, for spending some of your day with me today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there are some ways in the description you can do that. Of course, I'll have links to all of this in the description as well. If you'd like to follow along with this series, definitely get subscribed. Um, with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and I will talk to you guys in the next video.